So here's one you don't see very often. This is Batter Up Baseball by Astra Game Company. This was the game that got me started in this hobby. Not Stratomatic, not Status Pro, but this one. Um, kind of a rare game. Don't see a lot. I think it was made like only for, for like three years, from like 76 to 79. So if you're lucky to find one out there, they can be pretty expensive, but this is it. I would probably equate it to like a Strat Basic, but uh, real simple gameplay and probably my favorite tabletop sports game ever. Again, this is probably the first one. This is the game that got me started. So let's take a look at the player card first. Um, so a couple things, obviously, you can see that Bake McBride, left-handed hitter, throws right-handed, plays right field. A is the um, error rating, A being best, E being worst, and X is an outstanding fielder range. A lot of, of the chart lookups, you'll see something like single to right field, X play, X right fielder makes diving catch. So X, if you have an X rating and you're a fielder, you're going to make an outstanding play every once in a while. And just for reference, the entire Yankee infield from 1978, they're all rated X, for as bad as that sounds. But uh, speed ratings, five, this is on a scale of one to six, five, this is his base running, four is his stealing, bunt, G, M, or N, and G is uh, good, that's the best rating, injury rating. And this is where, obviously you're gonna generate all your results, and they're generated with these dice here. And you can get a roll anywhere from one to 30. So you can see that 17, 27, Seven, six, now one of these is a blank somewhere. That one. So this is how you can get your one. So one to 30 is your possibility. And they have a really interesting pitcher batter interface that I haven't really seen. So the way that it works is you would roll on the pitcher's card first, and if there's a result, you would cross-reference that result on the charts. Here they are. And they can just sample with that Bake McBride against Bob Bush. Be a 29, so there's a blank there. So the next roll would be on Bake McBride's card. And let's see, 23. That's going to get you a 34. And if you look at 34 on the chart, you can see that it's a line out the second. The charts are kind of neat because they give a little description on, on what types of hit. It's not just like single to center. Or, well, it can tell you if it's a ground ball, if it can, it'll tell you if it's a line drive. There's an example at 16, like if you look at, you see the infield single to second, the X second baseman makes a fine play, batter out 4-3. Um, you can see here on result 50, fly out nine, the possible error on the right fielder. Really a simple game. It'll take you about 20 to 30 minutes to play one game. A couple things on the pitcher's card. This right here is the pitcher batting card that you would use. 3P means he has a little bit of power, so three power. You can see I'm playing um, the Phillies and the Cardinals here, so Randy Lurch has a two power. These numbers right here are the stamina ratings. So as a starting pitcher, Randy Lurch could begin to tire in the seventh, and he has been known to come off come out of the bullpen, um, and he's good for three innings. 
Um, another thing to note here, this HRP, this is basically like home run prevention. So if somebody has, if you roll on the, on the batter's card and they get a four, like on Jerry Morales here, if you roll a one, he gets a four and a four. He's a home run to left center. But in this case, since Bob Forsh has a home run prevention of four, which is really good, like home run prevention against righties, he's going to knock that down to a double. Okay? So there is a lefty-righty factor. And it's right here. It's real simple. You're basically just converting, like, if in this one situation here where the pitcher's a righty and the batter's a lefty, you're going to convert action 25 and 22 to a number 11, which is a single. And this is kind of neat here, this lefty against lefty. It applies convert 11 to 28, but it doesn't apply against these great hitters from the 1978 season. That's what this is. This is a 1978 season. There is a There are ballpark effects. And it's based on home runs. And it's just one small chart here. And you can see that, let's see, let's find a D ballpark. Let's, let's, let's take a look at Yankee Stadium. Actually, let's look at Bush Stadium since that's what I'm playing in right now. Bush Stadium's a B. This rule applies to visiting matters only when playing. I've worked with this code. Any number, any two or four result on the batter's card, which are home runs. Those are converted to actions 39 and 37. I think that's when facing the home teams, yeah, like arm pitcher. So righty, righty, two or a four is gonna turn into a 39 or 37. So that's the simple stadium effects. And uh, the last piece is this special situation booklet. It is for, you know, advancing base runner advancement. And there's one simple chart for that. You look at this. Let's say, uh, let's say, let's do a sample here. Larry Boa is, let's say Bake McBride is on second. And Larry Boa gets a base hit. He gets this 12. Single to left center, runner advance to third. Anytime you see the asterisk, you have the option. So if it's the center fielder, you look at his arm rating. In this case, my center fielder is going to be George Hendrick. He's a minus one. And we saw on Bake McBride's card... His running speed is a five, so that knocks him down to a four. So you're basically just going to roll the dice. Six. Four speed. Actually, that would be safe for the throwing error. Out. Out minus means the lead runner is out, and so is the trailing runner. Out plus means the lead runner is out, and... The trail runner advances, and there's also a safe plus down here, and you can see that, and that is the lead runner is safe, and the trail runner moves up. This is the fielding chart. If you get a possible error, you just cross-reference the fielding rating of the player, roll the dice, and it's an error. Could be a throwing error. These are your steel. You look at the steel rating. Subtract the catcher's rating. There's, there is a hold rating in this game. Um, some pitchers have it, and you just subtract that from the stolen base rating of the individual player. Looking to steal, steal of third, steal of home. There's a squeeze play chart. As I mentioned, the bunting, good, medium, or I'd say mediocre, and then I would call that not good. You just roll the dice. This is a sacrifice chart. This is where it gets interesting because you're going to reference the 
the the person bunting their bunt rating with the lead runners on base speed as you can see that there and then you just roll them up and cross reference it on the chart it's an injury chart and then finally the hit and run chart So the rosters are a little bit limited here. That's one of the things about the game that's that's not the best, but actually works out for me because I don't really like doing season-long replays. I like, uh, you know, maybe start my replay in September, and typically what you're going to have are rosters that were effective after the trade line, but each team only has 24 carded players, and I can, for the most part, starting in September almost match the the actual lineups. Um, every once in a while, there'll be one or two players that that I need to substitute for, but really good for like that last month of the season replay, which is what I'm doing here with uh, the 1978 teams. So with that being said, I'm gonna get started here on this First of two, it's a double header today with the Phillies and the Cardinals at Bush Stadium. 